Today I want to talk about how to launch an outbound appointment setting campaign. Uh, this is exactly what we did in order to go from zero to $10,000 in 35 days with our agency. And I want to show you in this video how everything is done. So let's go to my screen because I don't want to waste your precious time. And this is what we are going to cover. I want to, I want to talk about what determines the success of an outbound appointment setting campaign. I want to talk about the steps that you need to follow in order to scale your business uh, with cold outreach the things that you need to consider in order to win, the platforms, the channels that you ideally have to use, and the KPIs that you must hit in order to be successful with this strategy. So let's start with the things that are important. What determines the success of an outbound appointment setting campaign? In my experience, if we really simplify everything, these are the most important things. If you are able to contact an unlimited amount of prospects, you are going to succeed. And here, in order to do that, you're going to need multiple accounts and you will need to find ways in order to surpass the limits and the restrictions that are going to be on Facebook and Instagram, and Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter and all of these places. Now, the second part here, you need to have an unlimited amount of leverage in order to make this work. So this means that you have to leverage other people's time and you have to leverage your personal brand, usually with video content, because without these things, your appointment setting campaign, especially with cold outreach, is not going to really work. So you have to differentiate, differentiate yourself just with the appointment setting strategy that you're going to use. And at the same time, you need to leverage other people's time and you need to leverage content, like I said before. And when I say differentiating yourself, ideally, you're going to pay attention. Ideally, you're going to check what your competitors are doing. You're going to see the messages that they are sending and then they are going to do you're going to basically do the opposite and uh, you're going to do something that is very different compared to what they are doing in this case in this case in this example uh, when it comes to us these are the simplest steps i don't want to make this video super long and super complex so if we simplify things again when it comes to the steps first you need to prepare your accounts especially facebook instagram linkedin youtube and you need to create a lot of content. And even if you end up going uh, to the other route and, and if you want to use, uh, for example, phone calls in order to contact prospects and emails, still you need to send ideally all of these prospects to your social media, to your accounts, so they can be warmed up with your content. That's the best way to grow, actually. Because at the end of the day, there is not like a magic, like a, like a secret formula in order to get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses. Or there is not like a specific email that will turn a cold prospect into a client. That doesn't exist. You will need to contact this prospect for sure, but then you have to send them to other places so they can continue engaging with you, with your content, with your business. And that's the only way to grow. So here, prepare your accounts, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and then you're going to prepare the script and the strategy that you, that you are going to use here. If you are starting from scratch, I would tell you just to start by checking out what your competitors are doing, like I said before, and then you can try to look for a way to personalize this process, to add more personalized, uh, to, add, to add basically more personalization to this sales process. So if they are sending, for example, a generic video, then maybe you can create a personalized video. If they are sending a generic email, then you can create a personalized email and maybe you can add something really, really specific about the prospect. That's how you are going to differentiate yourself. It's not about, again, it's not about the perfect email or the perfect first message. It's just about how much personalization you can add so you can increase your response rate. But the idea is just to be different from everybody else. The next part, this is something that not a lot of people eh, consider, but it's almost impossible to make an outreach campaign work if you are trying to do everything on your own. Even if you are starting from scratch, you're gonna have the you're, you're gonna have a lot of disadvantages and you're gonna have basically you're, you're not gonna be in the best position if you don't have someone that is going to help you to do this consistently i always talk about this example but who do you think is going to win the person that knocks on 20 doors a day here and there maybe in some cases they are not doing the, doing that and maybe in some cases they are not showing up or the person that is contacting that is knocking on 300 doors consistently without failure, of course, the person that is contacting more people is going to win because at the end of the month, this person is going to end up uh, knocking on 9,000 doors, for example, versus the other person that is going to only contact or in this case, knock on 300, 500 doors. So that's why we are going to the next step, uh, to the next point right here. Volume negates luck. And this is the most important thing. In order to make this outreach campaign work, work you need to contact as many prospects as you can. 
volume negates luck. If you're pretty bad at sales, volume negates luck. Volume will be the solution. If you are not that good with content, volume is the solution. If you are from another country and if you have an accent like me, if you make a lot of grammar mistakes, volume is the solution. So make sure to hire someone that can help you to, to hit this volume so that you don't have to depend on luck. And then after that, of course, you can start the campaign. Again, ideally, you're going to end up contacting hundreds or even thousands of people per day. I want to give you the KPIs in a minute, but that's when you can start the campaign after you get the appointment setter. In my experience, that's my opinion, because I want you to be successful. I started from zero. I didn't have clients and still I decided to hire my first appointment setter because I knew that he was going to help me to contact the right amount of people. And actually, we ended up going from zero to 10K. Like I said, I probably repeated that like 10 times, but I don't want to sound like I am arrogant or something like that. So that's what you're going to do. And then after that, of course, you're going to continue checking the performance of the campaign and you're going to continue checking the performance of the appointment of the appointment center, of course, every single day for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour in order to make sure that everything is working. And then you're going to you're going to analyze all of this data and then you're going to iterate at the end of the day. Your breakthrough is not going to come by finding like the perfect solution, like the holy grail. Your, the perfect solution for your business is going to be, you're going to find the perfect solution just by iterating. You're going to make a small change. You're going to make a small change. You're going to iterate, iterate, iterate. And that's when you can find the best solutions. Finally, that's when you can finally, that's when you can find the key to grow massively. So just keep that in mind. It's just a matter of analyzing and iterating fast, fast, fast. So volume, volume negates luck, that's really important, but this is another thing. Your goal shouldn't be to do cold outreach only. Your goal should be just to do this just so that you can get enough money, so that, just so that you can get the revenue in order to grow your audience on YouTube, in order to grow your email list, or maybe you can use this for Instagram, Facebook, or uh, even Twitter or, or TikTok. It can be anything, but the idea is to grow your audience. For example, my YouTube channel was able to grow because I was using my I was using these videos in my in my outreach. So my appointment setter was using all of the videos that I was that I was creating in order to contact new prospects. And because of that, the YouTube channel started to grow. And at this point, YouTube is bringing me a good amount of money because YouTube is showing my, my videos to a new audience. So that's the goal, growing your audience with cold outreach and at the same time getting enough money just so that you can start investing in paid traffic. At the end of the day, there is not a better way to grow your business than paid traffic. This is the most efficient way to grow your business, but only if you have a proven strategy that works, only if you have an offer that works. You cannot expect to start using paid traffic with a new offer and make a ton of money. However, if you are making a lot of money with cold traffic, with organic traffic, that means that now you can grow. At the end of the day, with paid traffic, it's, it's almost impossible to get like a 10x ROI, 20x, 30x. However, with organic traffic, you can do that. But once you have the funds, now you can invest in paid traffic because of course, cold traffic is going to have its limits. So you're going to use this money in order to start investing in paid traffic. And also you can start hiring better talent. You're going to start hiring people from the US, from the UK. You're going to start paying higher salaries just so that you can get more people that are uh, hungry and people that can help you to continue growing. Now, when, you, when we talk about the platforms and the channels, ideally, uh, there are a lot of options depending on your niche. Uh, you're gonna choose to use, you're gonna choose social media in order to contact new prospects or in some cases you can focus on cold calls or cold emails. In my case, most of my experience comes, fr comes from social media. For some of my clients, I used uh, these other methods right here, cold emails, cold, uh, cold calls, but for the most part, I used uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. For the most part, most of my clients actually came here from Facebook. However, you can also use the, the other strategies and that's gonna be uh, perfect as well. So this is pretty simple. Those are, the, those are all the methods that you can use. The advantages of using emails and calls and, and phone calls is that you don't really have limits. You can contact as many people as you can. The only problem is that in some cases you're not gonna get the best response rates. However, it has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. Like I said, if you can contact more prospects, then maybe that's better, but it depends on your niche because if we try to contact, for example, consultants, coaches, it's gonna be very hard to contact them uh, with phone calls. However, if we are trying to contact, let's say, roofing businesses, gym owners, then maybe we can use phone calls. So that's the difference. When it comes to the KPIs, again, volume negates luck. Always keep that in mind. 
So here with Facebook, ideally you're gonna contact 20 new prospects per day. And then on top of that, you're gonna add the follow-ups that you're gonna send to the prospects that you already have in your inbox. On Instagram, 40 messages, and then of course the follow-ups. With the follow, when I say follow-ups, I mean that in some cases, what I mean is that in some cases you can continue sending 20, 30, 50, 100 messages. As an appointment setter, I was sending 200 messages per day on Facebook. Uh, so that's an option, but of course you don't want to get restricted. So you can stay with 20 messages to new prospects and 40 messages to new prospects on Instagram. And then in order to overcome these limits, you can actually use different accounts. So you can use different accounts or you can start using other methods like right here. Maybe you can have an appointment set. Maybe in this case, you have, your appointment setter can use Facebook. Maybe they can use two accounts, then another two accounts on Instagram. And then they can use LinkedIn or Twitter. And then maybe they can send emails. And then maybe you have another appointment setter that is going to contact people on the phone. Someone that is going to do a cold calls. So when it comes to cold calls, ideally 100 per day, LinkedIn, uh, you cannot send so many connections. So it will be 100 a week. In some cases, I don't know why, you can actually send more connections. Uh, more, uh, yeah, more connections. It's pretty weird, but in some cases you can even send like 200 and 300. I don't know why, because in theory, in theory there is a limit of 100, but you can do that as well. And with emails, of course, you can send 100 emails if they are personalized. And if you are going to send, you're going to send an automated email, you can even send 1,000 emails per day. So you will ideally use multiple accounts and you just have to make sure to use different, all of these resources, all of these platforms in order to contact more prospects. Because at the end of the day, like I said before, probably I repeated this like 10 times in this video, but if you contact more prospects, the chances of this appointment setting campaign to work are going to increase. But now, if you want to learn how to contact an unlimited amount of prospects and, and how you can do this process in order to avoid restrictions, I will, leave, I will leave a link to a video right here and I will talk about the things that I did as an appointment setter and the things that I did for my clients in order to avoid these restrictions and limits and bans, just so that you can continue growing your agency even with cold outreach. So make sure to check it out and thank you for watching.